Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So let's learn about novel and its various developments in English literature. And before that, guys, please make sure that you subscribe. Well, let's get into the slides now. So the novel in the medieval times. So they are nothing but stories in prose. For example, Boccaccio's world famous collection of uh, love stories titled uh, Decameron during the year 1350. These stories are otherwise called as a novel. That means fresh story. So it verily signifies a story in prose and it is very much distinguished from a story in verse. It is otherwise called as romance, implying a story or a series of stories. For example, Mallory's Morte di Arthur. So what are the definitions of the novel? On the whole, a novel exhibits the probabilities of everyday life. According to a popular American novelist, Marion Crawford, he de defines novel to be a pocket theater containing all the accessories of a drama with no requirement to be staged before an audience. And according to the novelist uh, Meredith, it is a summary of actual life. And according to Henry Fielding, it is a comic epic in prose. And on the whole, it is a loosest form of literary art and it is free from all limitations. And it, it gives you a fuller representation of real life. And anyone having a pen, ink or paper can write a novel, says W.H. Hudson. So what do you think is the structure of a novel? Yeah, to begin with, it is not at all symmetrical. And it has a plot and the characters, yeah, they reveal themselves. And they are not at all symmetrical in exposition, crisis or conclusion. On the whole, a structure of a novel doesn't have any kind of a rigid framework. So, the English novels are known for unrivaled richness and variety. With an overwhelming creative urge, these uh, English novelists lack proportion in their writing. So they have sense of artistic unity and balance in narrative, description, characterization, and dialogue. So the author's view of life is what exhibited in the novel. So this obviously decides our preferences in fiction. So on the whole or at the outset, novels represent life in its fullness. So the novels on various eras. So here are a list of novelists and their novels on uh, various eras of English literature. For example, Thomas Nash, Unfortunate Traveler is a story on action and physical adventure. On the other hand, uh, modern novelists like Henry James, Virginia Woolf, Charles Morgan, their novels are based on psychology and spiritual development that typically represent the modern times. And on the other hand, uh, Servants uh, Don Quixote is indeed a Spanish masterpiece. Well, characterization counts. So characterization is very important while making a novel. So quite famous ones are Charles Dickens, Martin Chuzzlewit and David Copperfield. And then Mark Tapley, Mr. Pecksniff, Mr. Micawber, Uriah Heep are indeed unforgettable characters. So the settings of novels, obviously, uh, the settings of novels have no restrictions at all because background can be on any part of the world. Uh, the novelist doesn't mind whether it takes place in the past, present or even the future. Uh, for example, historical novelists like uh, Walter Scott, Lord Lytton, Charles Kingsley, Thackeray, they represent every period of English history set in their novel. So. Regional 
settings. So you must know that local settings or regional settings add flavor to the novel. So here you could see some of the famous novelists and their local settings. So to begin with, it is Scottish Waverley novels of Walter Scott, the Yorkshire Moors of the Bronte sisters, Wessex England as presented by Thomas Hardy, Dartmoor novels set in Devon by Eden Philpotts, and the Midland region as presented by Annal Bennett, and the Lake District as represented by Hugh Walpole. So here, these regional settings uh, add flavor to these novelists. So the social settings. So here comes uh, a list of novelists who comes with a purpose. Disraeli and Trollope has written novels on politicians. John Galsworthy and Hugh Walpole have written on upper middle class. Arnold Bennett has written on industrial life. H.G. Wells has written on a small shopkeeper. So you could uh, see the variety of social settings uh, that they have displayed in their novels. Aldous Huxley for the intellectuals and Dickens, Nicholas Nickleby on neglect of education in England. Of course, it's a great social issue, isn't it? Dickens, Oliver Twist on the abuses of workhouse system. Dickens, Bleak House on outrageous and delayed law, the complications that it has brought on the society. And then Charles reads, it's never too late to mend and hard cash uh, reflect dreadful conditions in prisons and lunatic asylums. And Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin uh, discloses the anti-slavery effect in the novel. And Upton Sinclair's The Jungle highlights uh, uh, issues on uh, that happens in a uh, meat packing industry for generations. So these are all the uh, social settings that are uh, that were displayed in the famous novels of famous novelists. Well, so a brief history. So the beginnings of uh, uh, prose writing uh, with the Elizabethans. So the Elizabethans wrote prose works that resemble a novel. Note it down. That resembled a novel. For example, John Lyley's Euphius and the Anatomy of Wit, Robert Greene's Pandasto, and Thomas Lord's Rosalind, Sir Philip Sidney's Arcadia, and Thomas Nash, The Unfortunate Traveler, or The Life of Jack Wilton, and Thomas Deloney's Thomas of Reading, and Jack of Newbury, and John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. See, note it down. These are the Elizabethans who wrote these prose works that resemble a novel, not exactly a novel, right? So, the modern form of novel began in the 18th century. So, to begin with, it is Daniel Defoe's Robinson, Captain Singleton, and Maul Flanders. And then comes Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Samuel Richardson's Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. Actually, it is a story written, it was a story written in the form of letters. And then comes Clarissa and Sir Charles Grandison. And then comes Henry Fielding. Uh, he wrote novels like Joseph Andrews, Jonathan Wilde, Tom Jones and Amelia. These are a list of novels the, uh, studying social evils. And then comes Tobias Smollett. His uh, novels like Roderick Random, Peregrine Pickle, Ferdinand Cow, Fathom, Sir Lancelot Greaves, Humphrey Clinker. These are all picaresque novels, uh, novels representing a wandering hero. So these novels belong to the 18th century, paving way for the modern form of novel. And then comes uh, Lawrence Turns, Tristram Shandy. Actually, it has no proper plot. 
uh, these are uh, actually a representation of the author's own whims, humors, and opinions, right? So, and then comes um, Oliver Goldsmith's Vicar of Wakefield. Uh, it has a brilliant characterization uh, with an easy and intimate style, and it is a perfect model for domestic fiction. Uh, and then comes Dr. Johnson with his Rasilas, and he did not uh, use it as a vehicle for moral philosophy. And then comes Fanny Burney, a female novelist uh, with her uh, trial on Evelina. Well, so now comes the 19th century. So here you could see that during this century, novels were redefined and uh, the Gothic tradition uh, begins its way. So here the novels underwent a process of refinement. These uh, Gothic novels were shrouded with uh, Gothic horror, covers horror, death, and even uh, romance. So Horace Walpole's novel during the year 1764, The Castle of Otranto, with a subtitle, A Gothic Story, is a perfect example, I'd say. So who are the other, other Gothic writers? So now comes the Gothic tradition uh, with a list of novelists and their respective novels. William Beckford's Vatek and Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho. Matthew Louis' uh, The Monk and uh, Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. Actually, Jane Austen uh, proposed this novel as a satire on supernatural terrors that were displayed in the um, uh, Gothic novels of other novelists. And it lacks supernatural and horror elements. As I told you, it is actually a satire on supernatural terrors. Well, Jane Austen. So, she is the one who presented the English country society. Uh, which are, uh, so these are the novels written by Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, Persuasion. So she, through all these novels, discloses all the foibles and absurdities and even the graces of a miniature English world, got it? So she never failed to present the English country society. Well, the Bronte sisters, so the novels of terror. So here, Charles Bronte through her novel uh, Jane Eyre and uh, Emily Bronte in her Wuthering Heights, they display a novel of terror and uh, it is used to heighten passionate human story without any absurdity. So these Bronte sisters are specialists in that. And now comes the historical novels with special reference to Sir Walter Scott. Well, so he was a contemporary and friend of Lord Byron. He inaugurated the historical novels. And these are the list of famous novels of Scott. What are those? Waverly, Guy Mannering, Old Morality, Ivanhoe, Kenilworth, and The Talisman. So he represented humbler men and women in his stories. So who are the other novelists in his tradition? So William Harrison Ainsworth. So his old St. Paul's and Windsor Castle are uh, examples. And uh, Black, J.D. Blackmore's uh, Lona Dune. And Charles reads The Cloister and the Hearth. These novels come under the uh, tradition of Sir Walter Scott's historical novels, right? Okay, so now let's see something about Charles Dickens. So he initiated a new phase in the history of novel with social reformation. So his uh, plot was, uh, was actually complex. And uh, he, his novels had humor and pathos, and uh, it aroused uh, deep sympathy for human nature, and his story is quite absorbing. And he exactly de depicted London lives of 19th century, and he brings in his own painful experiences that he had in London. And his notable novels were David Copperfield, Nicholas Nickleby, Great Expectations, and uh, Oliver Twist. Well. Now comes three novelists here, Thackeray, George Eliot, and Henry James. Fine. So Thackeray is Dickens' rival. Uh, his novel, 
uh, was known to be novel of ideas. He represented the philosophy of life. And irony is his chief weapon. So Vanity Fair is his masterpiece. And he's actually a fashionable preacher of uh, society. He uh, uh, preaches the fo follies of society, right? So the history of Henry Esmond is a historical novel with uh, uh, depth and realism in it. So Thackeray is known for that. And now comes uh, George Eliot. So uh, her novels were actually philosophical dissertations on current topics. Religion, politics, and social conventions fill her novels. And she was actually between the old and the new, and she was stuck between Thackeray and uh, Henry James, right, in her way of writing. So her famous uh, novelist, uh, novel saw Adam Bire, The Mill on the Floss, Silas Manor, and uh, Middle March. So here you could see the other one, Henry James. So he's uh, one of the important ones of the late Victorian novelist. So his emphasis on manners and conventions of a narrow section of society showed him unique. And he observes sensitive issues between individuals and classes. And uh, Roderick Hudson, the portrait of a lady, the golden bow, the wings of the dove, the turn of the screw, or uh, uh, show him to be a writer of modern psychological novels. Okay, George Meredith, so someone who belonged to the later 19th century. See, he's a satirist and he is a reformer in purpose. He was also called a pagan. So he thinks that spiritual growth uh, gives courage and self-restraint to a person. So uh, his psychoanalytical method shows him to be a unique novelist. And his style is indirect and epigrammatic. And sometimes it is irritating. And his poetic qualities add color to romantic passages in prose, right? So some of his uh, famous uh, novels are The Ordeal of Richard Feverell, The Egoist, uh, Ivan Harrington, and Diana of the Crossways. Well, Thomas Hardy, so someone representing human life and destiny. So his plots are usually somber and uh, disillusioned. So characters from farmers and peasantry add colors to his works. So he's a native from Wessex and he uh, presents Wessex region in its fullest form. Uh, he uh, reveals the innermost soul of characters and he represents, uh, he, uh, his characters represent the simple rustics. So he's known for his exquisite uh, humor and affection. So some of his uh, tragic novels are the Return of the Native, The Mayor of Casterbridge, uh, Tess of Day, Uber Hills, and June the Obscure. So now let's see who is the father of the modern detective story. So here, Wilkie Collins is the father of the modern detective story. So the woman in white and the moonstone are the famous novels of Wilkie Collins, right? Okay, the present time. So the present time, novels of the present time, that is novels uh, belonging to uh, the 20th century, much before than this current era, is known for the uh, after effects of the two world wars. So there were rapid ch uh, changes and uh, novels divided into two sections the Edwardians and the Georgians. And uh, the, these novels of the so-called present time reflects upheavals in social conditions. Well, the Edwardians. So the Edwardians followed the traditional methods, right? So the leading Edwardians were H.G. Wells, John Galsworthy, Arnold Bennett, and Joseph Conrad. So H.G. Wells reflected on social and political developments, and he portrayed the external world as revolutionized by new discoveries of science and rapid social changes. And then comes the Georgians. So they depend on the psychological research. So who are the leading Georgians? 
Aldous Huxley, D. H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, and James Joyce. So they explore these writers, these so-called Georgians explore the subconscious human mind, and uh, they don't have any kind of an orderly or symmetrical narrative. So stream of thoughts and images cloud their plot, and they have full freedom of expression. Uh, sexual matters uh, fit uh, their novels, and they actually break conventions. No more traditional practices. Or right, and then comes the storyteller. So they are E. M. Foster, Somerset Morgan, uh, J. B. Priestley, and uh, Sir Hugh Walpole. So what are uh, the moral and psychological? Who are the moral and psychological novelists? Right. So Charles Morgan. Graham Greene and Elizabeth Bowen. Well, the novels that came out during the 20th century. So they underwent an experimental pioneering, or in other words, a redefining the term called novel. Right. So they had the pressure to quit the old method of novel writing. So the novelists of the 20th century had a pressure to quit the old method of novel writing. So uh, they represented the contemporary vision of life and reality. Bersgonian and Freudian thoughts were overwhelming in their writings. Revolutional, they revolutionized uh, traditional concepts of time and consciousness. So according to them, especially the Bergsonian thoughts, self is temporal. So a change to past, present, and future uh, is consistent, but yet, uh, of course, they are continuous. So the stream of consciousness technique was adopted by these writers, Dorothy Richardson, James Joyce, and Virginia Woolf. So uh, role of memory in human experience played an important point. So they were specialists in recapturing the past. D. H. Lawrence uh, gave up uh, a new approach to characterization, right? So uh, the point of view of one of the characters uh, was much more valuable. Uh, for example, these novelists like uh, Joseph Conrad and uh, Henry J James uh, proved pioneers in it, and uh, they rejected the old way of storytelling. Their uh, way was completely new, and they broke up from the traditional method of storytelling. So here are a list of novelists who belong to the 20th century who modified the traditional novels. Right? They are Henry James, Joseph Conrad, H.G. Wells and Arnold Bennett. Well, so who are the other novelists who modified the traditional novels? John Galsworthy, right? Dorothy Richardson, James Joyce, and Virginia Woolf, right? So uh, these are the novelists who belong to the 20th century, and you could see how they differed from each other. Well, D. H. Lawrence. So when it comes to D. H. Lawrence, he emphasized an instinctual approach. He gave a new dimension to novel. So Freud's psychological theories parallel Lawrence art. For example, Sons and Lovers of D. H. Lawrence uh, gave a psychological impact of a possessive mother's love called Oedipus complex. So you could see how it paralleled Freud's psychological theories. And when it comes to Lady Chatterley's lover, you could see that the Freudian ideas on sexual instincts uh, was like a sexual instinct as a, and D. H. Lawrence very clearly presented sexual instinct as a bond of tranquility between man and woman. So another of, uh, one example of his uh, novel is uh, The Rainbow and Woman. So, Postmodern trends in fiction. So experimental tendencies uh, took place during the post Second World War, especially to, during the 1920s and 1930s. So it was uh, completely rejecting or uh, turning away from the modernists. So anguish and horrors of uh, the Jewish Holocaust uh, reflected everywhere. And uh, anxieties of atomic age could be seen in these uh, novelist writing. And uh, something else is uh, Britain's abdication or disowning its imperial status in world affairs was also reflected in the postmodern trends of literature. So Evelyn Waugh in uh, his trilogy, 
men at arms, uh, officers and gentlemen, unconditional surrender. He actually brings out an, uh, a satirical wit on world war. And even Graham Greene uh, was highly topical. He wrote uh, novels uh, disclosing sensation, uh, sensational news that penetrates deep into his works. He uh, discussed the depression of uh, capitalist monopolies, war scare, spy scare, uh, cold war, and even anti-Americanism, right? So uh, these are the different postmodern trends in fiction. So this is all about... Uh, novel and its various forms in English literature. So uh, the uh, students be, uh, belonging to second, uh, second B English literature will be making use of it for our examination. So good luck. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. And those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.